Hello and welcome to Quartic. This is episode 4 in our series, CFA Level 1, 10 Topics in 10 Weeks. The topic for this week and topic number 4 is Financial Reporting and Analysis. Now, FRA accounts for a huge 15% of the exam and should therefore not be ignored. Whether you have or have not studied accounting before, you will need to dedicate a significant chunk of your time to this topic. It's definitely up there in the list of most important topics for Level 1, so be warned. Now, you don't need to become an expert in recording transactions, but you most certainly need to be familiar with the main financial statements and how transactions affect them. The first two readings are relatively light and cover an introduction to the main financial statements and financial reporting standards. Now, I wouldn't spend too much time here because these are relatively simple in comparison to the others, but there are a few bits you will need to learn. For example, additional sources of information, such as footnotes, proxy statements, etc., as well as the steps in the financial statement and analysis framework. You can skim through the readings, but make sure you complete all the end of reading practice questions. The next reading, Understanding Income Statements, is where the complexity begins. This reading looks at the income statement in a bit more detail. Make sure you know the general layout of the income statement and the basics of accruals accounting. So that is where revenues are recorded when they are earned and expenses recognized when they are incurred. Your main focus here should be on the four methods of accounting for long-term projects. So we're talking about percentage of completion, completed contract, installment and cost recovery. And also look at the calculations of earnings per share. Analysis and calculations are equally important when it comes to this reading. The reading on balance sheets is next and should not take very long to cover. Be familiar with the layout and the content of the balance sheet. Now, most of the detail on assets and liabilities will be covered in later readings, so there's no need to worry too much here about the nitty gritty of it. Do, however, spend some time learning the section on financial assets. Ensure you know the income statement and balance sheet entries for held to maturity, available for sale and held for trading securities. The next reading is understanding cash flow statements. You should know the classification of cash flows as operating, financing and investing and be able to calculate these. In particular, learn the differences in cash flow classifications between US GAAP and IFRS for interest and dividends received, as well as paid. Questions on operating cash flows are most popular in the exam, so be able to compute these by using information from the income statement and balance sheet. And you need to know both the direct and indirect methods of calculating these. Next, we have financial analysis techniques. This is all about ratios, 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 and more ratios. Analysis is probably more important than calculations. However, in order to analyze, you have to be able to calculate. So again, spend enough time here getting familiar with the ratios that describe activity, liquidity, solvency, profitability, and valuation. Learn the three versions of the DuPont decomposition of return on equity, as this is quite popular in the exam. The next reading is inventories. Here, make sure that you know the methods for inventory valuation, as well as how to reconcile LIFO figures to FIFO and vice versa. Do as many questions as you can. If you do questions, you will see a pattern developing. Long-lived assets is next. Be able to identify which costs are capitalized, which costs should be expensed. Remember the basic thumb rule of thumb for intangible assets. Purchased, you capitalize internally generated you expense. You should understand the different methods of depreciation, be able to calculate the gain or loss on disposal of an asset. Look at impairments. Impairments have got different definitions on the US GAAP and IFRS. Look at asset revaluations as well and know the differences between investment properties and property plant and equipment. The next reading covers income taxes. Most students are actually petrified of this chapter. However, remember, you don't need to know everything in order to pass the exam. In this reading, understand that there's a difference between tax expense in the income statement and taxes payable to the tax authorities. So temporary or timing differences lead to deferred tax assets and liabilities. So be able to calculate these. Also look at what happens to the deferred tax asset and liability if there's a change in the tax rate. 
Non-current or long-term liabilities is the next reading, and this covers bonds, leases, and pensions. So in terms of bonds, look at the accounting treatment for bonds issued at a premium, discount, and at par. In terms of leases, look at the differences between an operating lease and a finance lease under both US GAAP and IFRS. When it comes to pensions, don't delve into too much detail. Just know the very, very basics of pension accounting and the differences between defined contribution and defined benefit pension plans. The last two readings are financial reporting quality and applications, and these build on knowledge from the previous readings. Now, if you're short on time, you can skim through the summaries, but ensure that you attempt all the end of reading questions. You'll find that doing this allows you to see the nature of the questions and learn the core content as well at the same time. So that's it for this week. Good luck with your financial reporting and analysis. Thank you all very much for watching. For free access to Quartic Online, please get in touch using the details on the screen. Also, you can follow us on Twitter at Quartic Training for access to more videos and more useful resources.